Hello, friends, and welcome to another mailbag episode of oh the Triforce. No, uh, no song this time. No song. I don't want to sing. I'm in a hotel, and my neighbors might hear me and think something weird is going on. Right. Okay. Well, One of my friends said that uh, he heard uh, a man clearly masturbating and farting. Uh, last night, and I thought well, it could have been me, but it actually wasn't. They were a masturbating and fire. Five floors below me. Why haven't right. I ever thought of doing that? <laughs> the guy was just doing it all. You're just getting so horny that you just got to let it all out, you know? That's it. You got to jack off and you got to do some farting well, and I'm going to be really self conscious when I'm doing that now that other people can hear me. <laughs> yeah. I, thought I, had, I thought I had privacy. Um, I did see you singing actually, P Flex, on stage. Um, when? At, 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 the, at the Data event. You know, oh, we sang little, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, that's a right. A little jazz band you got yeah. going out of all the talented random people. Why were, were you there. singing uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? So the the drummer, there's a there's an, we have an in-house band at the event here at uh, Dream League. It's just uh, three lads. They're really, really good. There's a right. guitarist, a bassist, and a drummer. But they can play a bunch of other instruments. They can play like keyboards and everything else, like trumpet. They're, they're proper musicians. And um, what, the drummer was sick, and right. the, the other two lads had finished their shift. So it was just us with the equipment. And we were like, uh, my friend Sheep had been practicing playing the drums. The band were helping her. Uh, Neil can play the keyboard a bit. So we just went up and Winter played the triangle because he's not musical. And we just sort of uh, decided to sing Twi Twinkle Took a Little Star is the only song that Neil could play on the keyboards. So that was the right. only song. So that's a good, <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> intro song, right? The, the, yeah, of course. The notes are really easy and... You um, delivered it. Three Blind Mad Mice is also Masterfully. another one. Three Blind Mice could have been a doer. Get That's them on that Three thing, Blind yeah. Mice or Mary Had a Little Lamb. Very <laughs> yeah, easy yeah, as we well. Do Mary. Those are really good ones too. For sure. Yeah, it was very funny. I, I, it looks like you're having fun anyway. I'm it was, Listen, it, it's I, been a fun time, yeah. On the topic of a man uh, masturbating and farting, um, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, let me give you that. some context as to why this, awesome. this made me think of this, okay? <laughs> I imagine that if you're farting and masturbating, you have your legs akimbo while you're jacking off, I'm assuming off, right? that, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that as well. And it reminded me of this show I watched. It was a documentary I watched about prison one time. I know, Flax, you know a lot about prisons. Oh, and yeah. You've had a lot of tales about prisons. But have you ever heard of the term spooning out? No. Okay, let me... Uh, it sounds disgusting. Let me enthrall you, yes. I thought it might have been something different. And when the guy was describing it... I sort of um, winced a little bit because I thought, oh, here we <laughs> oh, go. No. This is going to be pretty bad. Do we um, have to? <laughs> the way he described it was um, a man in the cell uh, laying ass naked on a bed uh, in a room with like many other men and his legs sticking out in the air. And at this point, I was like, fuck me. I do not want to hear the rest of this. Okay. One of them had a <laughs> plastic spoon. And the reason for this was... They were spooning out this man's anus for the drugs that he'd smuggled in oh to, to the prison. Yeah, right. They couldn't. They were lodged up there so high or so so far they couldn't get him out. So this this guy, they were holding his legs back, putting him into like the basically the birthing position, and uh, using a plastic spoon to try to just oh dig God. the drugs out of his ass. Oh yeah. my Try to rescue God. there. Yeah. I and guess that, otherwise he'd have to go to the hospital because he can't pass I mean, them naturally. It's, Is it's that what essentially life-saving surgery at this so, point. Because they're going to yeah. rupture. It's going to rupture at some point and he's going to have a butt full of cocaine or heroin or whatever. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, emergency surgery. It's like, a, it's like <laughs> they're all wearing like surgical masks. Yeah. It's like a yeah, machine. Yeah. No, they there's, don't have a machine, a just one very... of the inmates just says beep occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, the prisoners, I think, get very good at the sort of DIY thing, right? Like, oh, you yeah. see them cooking up gourmet um, grade meals with their, with their little kettle and stuff like that. And uh, I guess this is no different, you know? Just a bit of uh, life-saving intervention, surgery. Um, yeah. You know, you you've just got your gotta... little society and you've got your rules. You That's know, it. You've got your... Yeah. So, yeah, no, it just made me, just made me think of that and I thought I would share. Um, Get the Spoonman. Yeah. Oh, spooning out. Spoonman. <laughs> yeah. Bring okay. the spoon. All right. Here's, here's an email. Uh, this is from Matt, who is a pilot. Right. Um, and he's talking, we were talking about helicopters. I think uh, one opinion you three share with almost everyone I talk to is the feeling helicopters are more dangerous than aeroplanes. Yes. Yeah. As yeah. a rotor wing and fixed wing pilot, I have always felt safer in a helicopter. Due to a helicopter's right. ability to land almost anywhere with an open, vaguely flat surface, you can plonk one down in a field at the slightest sign of an impending emergency. An ability I have taken advantage of on numerous occasions. It usually right. doesn't take long to get a helicopter on the ground because I rarely fly above a thousand feet 
On one right. precautionary landing, the man whose yard I landed in brought my crew some ice cream and let us play with his family's litter of golden retriever puppies as they were dog breeders. I understand most people won't perceive helicopters the way I do because of the dreaded auto-rotation, but after 10 years flying both types of aircraft, I feel a heck of a lot safer in a helicopter. Interesting. Oh, well, yeah, that is interesting. Uh, thank you for being so level-headed about it as well. Uh, yeah, no, that was a good email. Yeah, because oftentimes it's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, idiot. Exactly. Um, and here's all my, here's my CV of all the flying time I have and, and stuff. And you think, yeah, no, this is great info, but like just delivered poorly, you know? But that was actually <laughs> delivered really oh, yeah, well. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Helicopters Solid. were like, the motorbikes of the sky. Do you know what I mean? Like, like if a plane is a car, uh, or and like a big jumbo jet is a van, yeah, you know, or a bus even. I guess like, do you, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the helicopters have got a reputation as yeah, crashing more. Well, they're, yeah, but I they're think a lot so, yeah. smaller. They are a lot um, smaller. I, I gotta say though, and um, and and uh, thank you for the uh, the email, pilot man. And also, I don't know if you would agree with this, but I've flown in a very small propeller plane, like a six seater, uh, because that's what uh, you fly on to get from Jersey to Guernsey, which is not it's not very far. It's like mm -hmm. a six minute flight or something like that. But they use these really really small propeller planes. They don't go up that high. You're sitting right behind the pilot, so you can see over his shoulder and you can see everything he sees and stuff. It's it's a really cool experience, actually. But I did not uh, feel unsafe at all. Like, I just, it felt better than uh, flying on a big commercial airliner in some ways. I felt a lot more safe. Like, mm. I, I don't know, maybe because I could see, like, what he was doing or I could see out the front or something. You know what I mean? I didn't feel like as uh, not in control somehow. Like uh, I, I mean, I, I suppose it would be like being in a car where yeah. the driving viewport, if you like, the whatever you call it, the wind, windshield, uh, yeah. was completely blocked off from a, your view and you couldn't see the driver. Yeah. And you couldn't even really see where you were going. Like if you were traveling at 600 a miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you still interested in learning to fly SIPs? Because that was, a, that was a, on your bucket list for a while. Wasn't no, it? I, I'm not interested in fully learning, um, but I would be interested in doing like, you know, um, like a one off, you know, like how they, you know, you can get it for somebody's birthday. I'm not hinting, by the way. You, you know, <laughs> okay. like you can get like an hour fly time for somebody's birthday and they go up with somebody and. They, they don't teach you how to fly. They just sort of show you the interesting bits and let you take over for a split second while you're cruising. That would, that would, that would be sufficient, wouldn't it? Yeah, that like, would be fine yeah. for me. I, like, I don't need to know how to learn how to land. I'd be stressed to the gills, like trying to land or take off and stuff. Like, that would be too much for me. But the rest you of just it, wanna, you yeah, know. Just want to see the interesting bits. Just want to cruise, go down and, you like, know. Would you be interested in going down looking at the Titanic? <laughs> no. Personally, I would not be it. No, Jesus. and uh, there's been some Too more. Soon. There's Barely been some more hours. news. There's been some more news on this since the last time we talked <laughs> yeah, about dead. it. Yeah, they're dead. Yeah, sorry, we're recording in advance. Um, they are. Yeah. They are gone. Unfortunately. All right. Here's here's one from from Paul. Uh, now this is interesting. I have a follow up to this because this is something some friends of mine used to do. Something similar. On the last mailbag episode, Sips said that BB guns don't really have the force to break the skin. I have a slight quibble with that. <laughs> the only reason being that I currently have a BB in my leg and oh. have since I was about eight. Oh god! Growing up in Texas, I know you might think that we spent most days furthering our own, furthering our intellect and learning about other cultures, being as open-minded as we are. He's being sarcastic, <laughs> I think. Surprisingly, however, my brothers and I somehow had access to a BB rifle. Uh, yeah. We came up with a fun game called Pump Once and Run. The rules shockingly drew their inspiration from the title of the game. One person would run back and forth across the backyard, and the other person would pump the air rifle once and fire. If you hit someone, you won. Not sure what we were trying for, but we were bored. I got hit in the calf and started crying. My mother had a nurse friend over who swore up and down that the BB didn't break the skin. I confirmed in my adult years by x-ray that the BB was still there, but they didn't want to cut it out due to the risk of infection. Uh, Paul, uh, some friends of mine used to play a game called Dart Head, uh, where one of them would have darts, uh, the, you know, the kind of darts you play darts with, and the other would pop his head up and down from behind the sofa, and his his brother would throw darts at his head Jesus. in an attempt to hit him, and he would have to duck out of the way at the last second. That was Dart Head. Um, dart Head is so, not the kind of game I want to be playing, honestly. I don't want to get shot out, out with a gun either. <laughs> this is dredged out something from my distant, deep memory, right? Now, when I when I was in the Scouts, okay, and I'm oh. part of being more than about eight or nine, yeah, maybe ten. Um, we used to go down in our village and join the Scouts and and do things like a jumble sale. And I remember one time. It was a jumble sale, and often what would happen would be 
uh, lots of shit would get donated that should have really gone in the bin to begin with. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, we'd have to take it all back to the bin, right? We'd have to take it all to the dump because it was all crap. Right. Um, and one of the things that was left was an enormous amount of porcelain, but it was Nazi stuff. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. It was like it was like a Hitler, a little porcelain Hitler, and some little porcelain Germans. You know, it was like World War II stuff. Um, what uh, what what youth brigade were you part of? Uh, I I don't know who gave it or how we ended up with it, but I remember the scout leader at the time saying, "Let's take this round the back of the scout hut and shoot it with BB guns." Right. So we used it for like target practice around the back of the hut, and everyone shot this porcelain to smithereens. Nice. With BB guns. I, for some reason that has been dredged out of my mind. Now, of course, this must have been in about 1990. Do you know what I mean? This is a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and so, I guess there were still, there were old folks, you know, perhaps dying and leaving this collection of stuff they had. Yeah, yeah. they're old Nazi memorabilia. I don't know how insensitive like that stuff was, Back then, oh, it was it was still bad. Or whether it was like, no, yeah, I, I figure, I feel like it would have had to have been pretty bad even back then, right? I mean, that was our reaction. Our reaction to it was to shoot, like, not sell it, <laughs> and to shoot it. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, go on, carry on. What's the next one? Uh, okay, um, this one is a uh, an, an, a rant from uh, uh -oh. Chris. Um, okay, which I'm gonna read it because it's interesting. It ends with a question that you might be able to answer. Uh, I'm writing to ask if you have any stories about parking tickets, right? And they're uninformed dispensers. He means um, like traffic uh, wardens. Yes. Attached is a photo of the sign I was meant to spot one bay down and two bays across the road. Uh, there are three ticketed signs. However, the one hidden sign is stating it was a permit bay. I'm going to show you lads this picture because this is ridiculous. Right? Is this in the UK? Uh, yes, this is very much in the UK. They're, it's such a such a it's such like um a death trap, right? There's like, no sign in that picture. Exactly. Right. So you said if you a look at that picture, there. it's hidden behind it's a bush. It's a wall and a bush. That, right, right, right. So look at the pole at the bottom of the bush. The sign yeah. is clearly behind there. That's what Paul was meant to. Uh, Chris was meant to spot. Right. Was this sign? I'm usually on the side to protect people just doing their job from abuse. This is where the email gets really angry. However, <laughs> what cunt decided this was fair and have his huge cunt of a friend, Alan, reject the appeal? I don't know why this is so specific. This seems to be going above and beyond to give me a ticket. Um, that's his unfortunate. huge cunt of a friend. <laughs> his huge Alan, cunt of a friend, Alan. They travel in packs. Well, Alan, uh, oh, you've done Chris wrong here. I think it's very He's unreasonable. He's pissed. No, I, honestly, though, um, Chris, I'm with you. I fucking hate getting parking tickets. Even if I'm in the wrong, it just, I hate it. It's so annoying. Like, uh, I've only gotten, <sighs> like, two, and it was definitely my fault every time. It's like getting told off by a teacher combined with local jobs worth. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, man. You know, some local Alan on the council rejecting it, do you know what I mean, after you've clearly put in a legit appeal. And it's like, why are these people so awful and unreasonable? It's like small village yeah, yeah. assholes and, yeah, people, like, being... It's the classic thing of like the, the traffic warden hovering around waiting for the you you know so when you're like one minute over yeah. they're like slapping the ticket on I hate that like I hate that uh, I hate how like you're not really meant to park on the side of the road especially when it's like really obstructive like buses can't get by and stuff like that and you will see cars parked up like that all day long for days and days and days and these guys are just wandering around parking lots giving tickets you think Get out there and get those cars off the side of the road. The ones that like blocking the whole road. You, like people can't even drive past or it's a two-way road and you have to wait for like the, all the buses to come by and stuff because somebody's just parked on the side of the road. But they never seem to I do know anything it's always, about those. I know it's always a perspective thing, but you always feel like they're not on, it's not going your way. Yes, do you know what I mean? When, yeah. when's, the, when's the dice going to go my way? Exactly. Jamie? Like I'm, I'm rolling the dice. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I'm blowing on the dice. Like it never, <laughs> it's always at the end of the longest line, you know? So I, yeah. I do have, I do have uh, one positive parking ticket story, which is that I was given a parking ticket. This is for parking in my road. Uh, and they said I was parked on the pavement. And I'd submitted photographic evidence that the part of the road that I'd parked on was not pavement. Um, and I gave my case. I stated it eloquently, if I may yeah, say so. Yeah. And they said, yeah, fair enough. We decided to rescind the ticket. Yeah. I was like, great. So it does work when you have a legitimate. That is uh, a great story and everything, but you should not have had <laughs> to go to that much effort. 
Well, I don't you know, know what because I mean? here's like, the thing: imagine a what life, about people who aren't as charismatic as you? No, no, no. This was an email. This was just an email. What if like, just, my 95 year old grandmother did that? She wouldn't be able. She to... She shouldn't be driving a car. That's my opinion. Oh my All god! Right? Uh, I, I honestly think. Sorry, I've Grandma been in a car. Ma. He doesn't mean she, what he says. <laughs> he does mean it. She he listens to the it. podcast every week. She You're going to get an email from her. Now. <laughs> I'm happy to. I'd love to get an email from your grandma. You ageist. Happy, happy to be an ageist. All right. This is uh, this is a uh, an interesting one. Um, this is from uh, Rian. Um, Rian. 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 Uh, it's a it's an Irish name. So oh, Rian. 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 Uh, I'm a 21 year old college student from Ireland. Love the right. podcast. Blah blah blah. Thank yes. You, Rian. Yes. Thank you, Rian. So I've been meaning to write in for some time now, but forgot which episode I was writing in reference to. Classic listener. Honestly, sounds right up our street. Yeah. Recently, I've rediscovered it. It's episode 99.7. Oh, in yes. this episode, drug use featured a tad, and you mentioned how you wanted to do LSD, but Mrs. Flax forbade it. Thank God you listened to her. <laughs> a couple right. of summers ago, me and a group of lads rented a house out in the middle of nowhere for a week with the ultimate goal of drinking ourselves to death, and somehow LSD got involved, and I and a friend tripped for a total of 13 hours each. We started at 2 p.m. It hit me around 3. I was laying down flat on a bench, staring at the sky, and it started with the clouds morphing into rolling dice. It was okay. surreal. What I saw changed from my friends in cartoon form, to children hanging from a noose, to David Bowie in the shower, Che Guevara on a wall. I found that looking at people who knew me better than others there revealed far more disturbing images than those who did not. Some other fun facts. I only moved four times in total in that 13 hours. I ate nothing and only drank a single cup of water all day. I had extremely short-term memories, like asking a friend a question, forgetting what it was that they said every time, uh, and my entire world being shattered after a friend opened a door I was standing next to. Basically lost all sense of time and space. I was completely out of it. I would genuinely <laughs> place it. This is, this is a weird one, because he said don't do it. I would genuinely place it in the top five days of my life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but here is why I too recommend you never do this drug. It messed with my heart to such an extreme degree oh. that I genuinely thought I would die at least three separate times. It beat faster than I ever thought it could, and I know it was not in my head, as my other friends confirmed it by checking my heart. The only way I was able to get it down was attempting to believe it was all in my head and it would go down within 10 minutes if I were to guess. So there Jesus, well, it just shows, eh? Do you know what? I, I mean, I grew up um, around a lot of uh, people who like doing drugs and drinking and, and all that kind of stuff when we were younger. And at the time you think, yeah, whatever, you know, this is happening and th these people seem to know what they're doing or whatever. And there was always like a couple of scare stories, you know, people had to go to the hospital or, or or whatever they got carried away and stuff and that's all fine but i now that i have kids this petrifies me to think that they might be doing this stuff you know mm. what i mean because of all the things like now now that i'm older i realize everything that could have possibly gone wrong and how it's a miracle that most of the people i know from being a kid are even still alive you know what i mean yeah I, where's I, the I, scale I, Where's the scale on this? Like, I can go to the pub and have one drink, right? And be a little bit tipsy. Yeah, I've been to the pub with you and one drink is your hard limit. No, but every time, there must be like a little, like a minor dose, right? No, you don't have to go to like the fucking, like literally the spacing out of your entire body and like fucking floating above uh, the I earth. I think that's called like micro dosing. Get shattered. Micro dosing. That's micro dosing. That's micro dosing, which is where you just take a little bit. All right, this one, uh, this one is from a fellow Canuck, Adam. Hello, Adam. Um, he says uh, he last year he moved to Calgary, Alberta. Sips called this the Texas of Canada. Yeah. And it sort of is, but it is truly beautiful and the people are very friendly. Oh, yeah. No, don't get me wrong. It is a beautiful part of the country for sure. Yeah. My girlfriend and I are very outdoorsy and hike often. I have done portage. She has yet to. Well okay. done. We're halfway. Yeah, good. Last weekend, we were hiking outside the mountain town of Banff yes. in the woods. Oh, we my God. Have you guys ever Banff. been to Banff or heard of Banff? No. I've heard oh, man. of it, yeah. Do a fucking Google image search on Banff and prepare to have your mind blown. It's beautiful. It's probably right. the most beautiful place I've ever been to on this whole Godforsaken Earth. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at it. That's B A N F F. Yeah, B A N F F. Holy shit. Yeah. It's look at this. Fucking place. wild, man. You can just go as well. You can it takes a couple of hours to drive from Calgary, but it's Incredible. You you drive by the old uh, Winter Olympics uh, village. They got all the old ski slopes and everything. And then you you sort of wind your way into the mountain and it's just like it's like being in Grizzly Hills in fucking World of Warcraft or something. Like it's well, it's fucking it's funny insane. you should mention that, yeah. young Christopher. Oh, because nice, nice. Here we go. I, uh, 
Uh, we were hiking outside the mountain town of Banff. We were remarking on how a boulder ahead of us sort of looked like a bear. Right. And then it raised its big boulder head to look right at us. It was a huge grizzly, I would guess, five foot tall to the shoulders. Have a look at this bad boy. This was the bear in question. I've just posted They've a picture They've taken a picture of it. Of it. That's no, a big okay. old bear. <laughs> but oh, that oh. is a known bear in that area. They right. just backed away from this thing. This particular bear is called The Boss. He weighs 700 pounds, about 320 kilos. That's a big bear. He has been seen to eat other bears, and he once got hit by a freight train and just walked it off. Yes. So look at the size of that bear. Have you guys ever had particularly scary wildlife encounters is the question that Adam yes. ends with. I, I, I am, I have I am a... more frightened of that bear on that trail than fucking helicopters or, <laughs> you know, submarines or, you know, bike, bicycling on the road. Like, do you know what I mean? Any, driving a car, motorbike, anything. That bear f terrifies me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have a well, a well documented, I've, I've, I'm sure I've told this story even on this podcast, but I will do a TLDR very briefly. I had a bear encounter. Uh, I was camping with my parents and my brother when I was young. My parents went uh, for like a little walk and left me and my brother. Well, actually, no, they took my brother with them. I was left alone. I was a little bit older. I was probably like 12 or something. I had my Game Boy. I was in the tent um, playing my Game Boy while they were gone. And I heard like some rustling, um, not like immediately outside, but like further down. So I look down the road and there's this huge fucking bear sniffing around at like the garbage cans and everything. So I went back in the tent, hid underneath my sleeping bag and played dead because I was told that that was what you did. Um, I, I wasn't actually strictly told that. It's just something I picked up on from like watching TV or something like that. <laughs> uh, Is that the right advice? I don't even and my know. Parents, my parents came back and they were like... They were like, where, where are you? Like, uh, they, they, they could, they knew I was there, but they were like, you know, they thought I was just like playing a joke or whatever. And I was like, get in the car quick. There's a bear out there. And they were like, oh shit. So we all got into the car. Uh, and we were like, my parents were like, there's no, there was no bear, whatever. Right. Like, and I was like, no, no, there's for sure a bear down the road. I've been hiding. I like, I, I don't know if he's around here or not. And then sure enough. He was like 10 feet away from the car. He oh made, made his way up to our camp or whatever. So he had to wait it out, wait until he was like far enough away. And then my dad went to uh, speak to the people who run the camp or whatever. And apparently he was like tagged, known and everything, but they still had to like tranquilize him and airlift him out Jesus. into the wild or whatever. But yeah, it could have been, uh, could have been a pretty nasty could one. He was of, huge. He was huge. Yeah, yeah. They're scary, man. They are I pretty mean, scary. Really yeah. Are. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Ah, there's, there you go. Thank you for the email. No problem. This is from Anon. <laughs> this is from, from an anal. Anon. Oh, Anon. Anon. All right. Not Anal. And Sorry. I like the start to this email. I'll cut straight to the point. I've been working at Trinity College, Cambridge for a couple of years now, and for a ton of reasons, I am leaving. As part of my departure, I wanted to do something for you lads. I've written, I have a tiny penis, and a crudely drawn the trifle symbol on a piece of paper. I have folded it and attached it to a section of the college where it will go unnoticed and untouched for quite some time. I hope you get a chuckle knowing that this exists. Also, <laughs> with your consent and given that I receive a reply okay. before I leave, 22nd of June, we've just missed the cutoff, I think it could be a laugh to put more information on the paper, such as this email address, and a plea for information on the state of the note. If you want to know anything else about the college, feel free to ask, and I will now <laughs> post the pictures for you lads to see. Uh, these are the pictures that I've been given. This is the note in question, which as you can see is a, a scrappy piece of paper that yes. says, I have a tiny penis. I have a tiny it. penis with three triangles, yes. With the triangles. And then this is, I presume, where it's tucked, which is, I don't know what that is. It's like a little shelfy thing or something. Yeah. Um, held down by what looks like a, I don't know what that is, a piece of plastic like a magnet. or a, a magnet yeah. or something. So something, if, yeah. If you work at uh, Trini Trinity College, uh, Cambridge, and you come across this note, Go ahead and add the email address to it with a with a, an addendum saying, please uh, tell us about yourself if you find this note. It's like a little Triforce geocache. It is. Only yeah. it's hidden. Yeah. And it's kind of weird. Because um, <laughs> I think I think you might find it and not get the reference, well, you know? Yeah, you might. And be very confused. Just think, why have they drawn three triangles and told us they have a tiny penis? How strange. Mm. So it needs more information. But yes, I'm, I'm down for this to become a little geocache. We could set these up all over the country. And why not? I yeah, mean, why not? People, people do, like, this is a common thing 
in towns and cities where they have, um, you know, at zebra crossings, they always have like some rave stickers stuck on the fucking yes. crossing posts, right? Uh, hidden. I like that. I don't want any graffitiing. No, anything. yeah, I like the I like the hidden aspect of it as yeah. well. Yeah, it's like a going to Comic Con, walking through the crowd, and not recognizing ninety nine percent of the, the, what the t shirts reference, but then the one you do see, you're like, oh. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, I Indeed. appreciate. I appreciate. I you. appreciate that. We appreciate you. All right. This is uh, this is from Chris. This is. I don't think I've ever had an email with a subject uh, heading quite like this. But uh, it, it's a it's an interesting story. At least I can cut to the chase a little bit. Uh, the the subject line is accidental sex offender. Wow. That's the wow. title. That of is the email. that is a that is a, a title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, don't worry, it's not as bad as it, as it sounds. Uh, basically, he went out for a night in Bristol uh, for a stag do, and they had a good night. They were down at the Brew Dog Pub down by the canal. If you know, that I know, one, Lulu. I know it well. Uh, after oh, a few do drinks, you now? He knows it well. After a few drinks, uh, <laughs> he's going to go down to the toilet. I hadn't realized one of my friends followed me, and whilst walking down the stairs, shouted at me in his best Johnny Vegas impression. I'm going to fuck that tight little ass when we get in that toilet. <laughs> Jesus. I thought this was quite funny until I heard a blood curdling scream and realized there was a young lady who was barely five foot tall at the foot of the stairs staring up at me with eyes as wide as saucepans. Uh, after a right. few seconds of confusion, I then realized that due to the angle of the stairs, all this poor young lady could see was me, a six foot tall, 15 stone lad who's followed her down the stairs to then loudly proclaim that he was going to make love to her back passage whether she liked it or not. Oh she my couldn't God. see yes. my friend behind me. Naturally, realizing this, I did the only logical thing. I panicked and stood still, blocking her way up the stairs, and stared at her dumbly. It wasn't until she pushed past me and ran up the stairs and my friend that I snapped to attention and thought maybe I should explain things to her. But of course, by that point, it was too late. Um, so then they just fucking legged it, which is a sensible thing to do. Uh, my question to you guys is: What would you have done in this situation? Oh man, I would have been. I would have probably oh made it a lot worse, but I would have definitely <laughs> been talking. I would have been like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, that wasn't meant for you. You you wouldn't believe this." I would have gone into the whole. You know, first first I drank a whole bunch of milk before I left the house because I knew I'd be drinking. You know, like I would just be <laughs> verbal diarrhea, all battle stations manned. Like I would just be trying to backpedal out of that one. Uh, so like not not with any eloquence whatsoever, but I would be trying my hardest. Like there's no way I would just not say anything yeah. and then run I, away. I would feel compelled to speak as well. Yeah. Um, try and try. I, I think it's different because I'm not it. a six foot tall, fifteen stone guy. I'm a five foot tall, seven stone guy. Do you know what I mean I'm like I'm half this guy's size? So it it means that I prob she probably wouldn't have believed the voice had come from me. You know, maybe. And so she would have. I would have just probably like. Well, then again, maybe the stairs gives it like an even bigger advantage. I think I would have tried to back out. I would have been like, whoa, that wasn't me. That's this guy. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll protect you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I would do that. That is very unfortunate. But it just shows you got to be careful what, what you're saying, um, you know, especially when you're out in public or whatever. Like it's, you know, kind of laugh or whatever, but you never know who's around listening and, you know, they might be taking it the wrong way as well. Yeah. So Daff and uh, Ravs and some others went to Berlin last weekend. It's not really my story to tell, but Daff was in a, um, a bathroom in Germany. Right. And... He was um, chatting to, uh, just chatting to a stranger that he'd only just met in the pub in this bathroom. Uh -huh. And there was basically, it, that one of them got the, the, the stranger got the wrong idea. Right. And uh, I'll let Daft tell the story on his own terms, but you have to ask him, P-Flex. It's very funny. Okay. Uh, very funny. The So basically just like, don't give people the wrong impression. <laughs> when you're, okay. When you're I in can the bathroom. imagine what the wrong yes, impression was. Yes, I can was. imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Dav. Yeah. Right, I'll get him to talk about that. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey. What's the what? easy way to save? Oh, sorry. Hold on, young man. Sorry. The easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Have you been feeling the impact of inflation? Have you, young man? Yes, I have. What's the craziest price hike you've noticed? Oh, um, it's got to be bread. A loaf of bread. I, can you believe the cost of a loaf of bread these days? Well, you could save some of your precious money with some coupons that you might purchase online. Some some goods and services, and the easiest way to find them is with money. Throw away your coupon book. Don't become overly attached to a, a bunch of 
a bunch of coupons. But I've been you saving for years. All oh, my coupons. I've been saving them too. My, my scrapbook is in ruins. <laughs> Tatters. But it doesn't matter. It's been replaced with PayPal honey. I genuinely did use honey like twice this week. And it both times found me a coupon that saved me, I think it was like 10 pounds each time. Uh, it's a free app. I've got it installed. Uh, this is a genuine shout out. You don't need your coupons anymore. Was it easy to use? I struggle with technology. Yes, it's very easy. It doesn't just work on desktop. You can get it on your phone as well, uh, which I have. And if you don't uh, already have it, you can be straight up missing out. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Triforce. Uh, I can do it for free by installing it at joinhoney.com slash Triforce. That's joinhoney.com slash Triforce. Do it today! Slash that! <laughs> slash those prices! All the prices! The coupons! Today's podcast is sponsored by ExpressVPN. If you're going online without a VPN, it's like changing while leaving the curtains wide open. Oh my god. You might not have anything to hide, but why give random creeps a chance <laughs> to uh, take photos of you and sell them to companies. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that is what it is. God. Yeah. I uh, couldn't have put it better myself. When you go live without a VPN, ISPs see every single website you visit. They can legally sell this information without your consent to ad companies and tech giants who use your data against you. ExpressVPN anonymizes your identity and your activity. Your data is encrypted. An easy thing to fire up the app and click one button. I've got it on my phone, on my computer. I'm going to put it on my new tablet. I'm going to put it into my body cybernetically so that no one can ever know anything about oh. me. I think that would be pretty cool. This is actually a really good idea. I, I just feel more comfortable browsing knowing that uh, the powers that be are not tracking my data and putting it on some mega server somewhere. So yes, secure your online activity today by visiting expressvpn.com slash triforce today. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash triforce. You get an extra three months free. Expressvpn.com slash triforce. Thank you very much. All right, this one is uh, this is this is from Ash, uh, and the uh, the title is "Rocket in Your Pocket" ad. No Wisconsin stuff here, right? which is a common subject heading. People are saying, "No, this is not about Wisconsin." Don't thank, worry, okay. thank I you. still read the email. I appreciate um, you. That's all right. I download my podcast so I can listen to them offline, and therefore usually skip the ads. Oh, thanks for support. Thanks for supporting the podcast, Ash. Appreciate that. Yeah. However, <laughs> today I was running late, so I let them roll. <laughs> Nice. I can say with some certainty that my phone is not listening to me and giving me ads based on what I'm talking about, as the first ad I got was for erectile dysfunction pills, I'm a woman, that included the delightful phrase, it's time to put a rocket in your pocket. Nice. Uh, the second was a nappy ad, I don't have kids and I'm not planning on having any, including a wonderful description of how they'll help you to avoid a poonami, which is a tsunami of poo. Yes, I've heard uh, of this. Keep up the good work. Um, that's interesting. Wow. I, I did think it was listening, but obviously in that case, it has no idea what you want, Ash. It's, it's not listening to you, it's you. listening to the podcast, because these are <laughs> yeah. all very common topics on the podcast. That's a very good point. It might have been listening to us, yeah. not you. Yeah. yeah, as three old men, these two ads are very <laughs> relevant to us. Yes, you know. erectile dysfunction. And poo. And it's kind of weird that erectile dysfunction and then kids you know what i mean like uh, the two would would almost seem to cancel well maybe each other. it's nappies for for old folks though you know? oh could be yeah could be yeah so could well, be maybe they're hoping even... that what gives you a boner is nappies oh well, that's well there are there, there are, are communities out there for sure of uh of people wearing diapers and getting boners in them so you know it's true could be God, could be. You, you'd think that you'd have to take the Lewis. advertising more <laughs> specifically. You know what I'm saying is, if you're if you've got if you're advertising to someone you have any information on at all, you'd think that you'd sell like the ads that would be served would be very generic stuff. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like very broad stuff. All right, this is an email from uh, Brett, uh, which is not a name you hear very often, and Brett is from Wolverhampton. So read this out with, with your best Black Country accent. That would be great. Okay. Right. Oh, hi, chaps. I was listening to an old episode of the podcast where Sips got into playing Fortnite because they added in the Wu-Tang Clan. And it reminded me of an old game called Wu-Tang Taste the Pain. Uh, it was released on PS1, and basically you went around levels killing some goons while playing as someone from Wu-Tang. Each member had their own signature weapon, like the Teenage Mitten Ninja Turtles, and had a fatality like Mortal Kombat. Uh, really? My favourite was the Jizzer, who had some knife on the end of a chain and would pull people's heads off. I'm sure Method Man had a big hammer. 
The more I write this email, the more it <laughs> sounds like a fever dream. So I had to Google it to make sure it existed. Love the podcast, all the best. I, I get that uh, sometimes as well. I'll remember something from being from you know when I was a kid or whatever game I used to play, and it seems so absurd that I actually have to look it up to make sure that it, I wasn't just dreaming it or whatever. But mm. yeah, no, it, it oftentimes is this is the case that. Games are just a bit mental, and uh, they are exactly how you remember them. Mostly mental. Uh, I, I, I think often about old games, but uh, you can just Google them these days. So it's very hard to have a, is that a real thing or did I imagine it? The only problem is there are movies that I've definitely watched, and when I try to look them up, I cannot Google enough detail about it to actually find it. Uh, and it kind of leads down a weird rabbit hole where I'm just stuck, and I'm convinced now that I've added details on that weren't there, which is... Um, which I do is that with a movie called The Peanut Butter Solution, because I think the movie gave me nightmares when I was a kid. And I don't remember the movie that much, but I remember va vaguely the nightmares I had about the movie, and I get the two mixed up all the time. It's a mm. very confusing mess for me, even thinking about that movie. Uh, okay, this one is from Josh. Um, from Down Under, I believe. Sorry to compare camping in the UK with camping in Australia, but I have a funny story you might like. This is this is titled Camping in the Heat and Complaint About Lewis. <laughs> so, no. It's a double header. It's not a big complaint, don't worry. Um, in <laughs> high prepared. school, my school took its year nine students on a two-day camping trip. The aim was to teach us leadership, etc., etc. We had to pack our bags ourselves in team of three and distribute weight so that we could take all the stuff we needed without everyone having heavy bags. Sure. My group <clears throat> was me and two close mates. One of us was responsible for the water, one had the tent and cooktop, and the other one had to carry the food. We did not take this seriously and did not coordinate at all. I can well believe it. Yeah. I arrived on the day which started with a five hour hike through the Aussie bush on a 35 degree day wearing track pants and a long sleeve shirt. Oh my About God. About an hour in, I re realized it was too hot and went to change into my shorts but I'd neglected to bring any, or any other pants at all. All I had was my t-shirt and my pair of tracksuit pants. I decided to cut the legs off my pants with my pocket knife, but ended up cutting them too short. So I had to do the hike in rough cut booty shorts. <laughs> uh, despite not packing any clothes, I was still too unfit, and one of the rugby players in my class ended up carrying some of my stuff. After arriving at the campsite, which was next to the beach, we got ready for dinner. When I asked what our mate had packed, he said his mum had made him some spaghetti bolognese. He then pulled out a massive Ziploc bag, unrefrigerated, of a homemade spag bowl. This was the <laughs> only food we had for the two-day trip. Oh my god. <laughs> which also included the hike back up a cliff face. We ate it anyway. Because we were camping next to the beach, it got cold at night, and not having any legs in my pants, I got a cold and had a runny nose for the rest of the trip. Man. In the morning, we had spag bowl for brekkie, and my mate shat himself on the hike out. <laughs> but that sounds awful. Uh, that, the whole, uh, the visuals of that whole thing are the worst. That sounds like the exact event that happens on every one of these Duke of Edinburgh <laughs> hikes. Honestly, this is like this textbook hike. I yeah, think it is. Used. Uh, so yeah. the P.S. Lewis, when Flax mentioned the live lightning strike website, you said, "Well, it's over the ocean, so it can't be reported." This annoyed me, because did you really think the website had people looking out their windows, updating strikes to the exact location, keep these comments to yourself on our upcoming episodes? <laughs> yeah, Lewis! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot, yeah. jeez! So uh, I have uh, an answer to um, what happens with the, uh, the lightning strikes. We had quite a few emails about it, actually. Uh, so uh, the way it works is um, when lightning, this is from uh, Darius, when lightning strikes, it also releases a burst of radio waves, uh, which various listening stations pick up. And you can then use the delay between the arrival to triangulate the position of the lightning strike. Amazing. Uh, so that's the answer. Um, but there is more interesting stuff these listening stations can hear. Uh, since the radio waves are in the very low Aliens. frequency, they are within human hearing frequency. Oh. You can therefore convert them directly to sound. And then there are these websites where you can tune in and hear lightning strikes across the world. And you can hear the uh, the sound of the the lightning. Does it sound like you'd expect it to, or is it like one of those things you know where they're like, "Here, listen to this crazy sound we heard in space," and it's always like, Ooh. <laughs> "Is it just that or what?" I don't know. Yeah, yeah listen it's like I've heard this shit before. They're like, "We we this is what this star sounds like." They play this otherworldly fucking uh, wave song sound, and they're like, yeah. "It doesn't actually sound like that." This is like pitched up one thousand times, or like you know, or like you know, pitched. Listen, here's the sound. Sound of Jupiter, and it's like, <laughs> bing, 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 bing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it doesn't sound at all how you'd expect it to, right? No, like, and it's also, I think they're just converting. 
I mean, it might sound, maybe it does sound like that. If, if the, you know, they're, they're always like, this is what it would sound like if there was an atmosphere and it made a sound you could hear. It's like, all right, so it's not actually making a sound. I think the just... problem is, is that what happens is, right, you get a scientist doing something interesting and they report it and then the, the, the tabloid, you know, the next tier up report it in less words and then mm. the next tier up report it as a single line yeah. until it gets, until that's <laughs> what we see. We get... You know, we get from like a study of the you know radio waves given off by a black hole that that gets converted through to uh, black holes sound like a fart. Exactly, <laughs> you know? that's what they do. Is. Imagine you're out there like, hey guys, look at look on the horizon. <laughs> it's just fart noise, it's just <laughs> bubbling a little. Oh, kind of sucks the majesty out of space. If it's all maybe just... not fart. Maybe maybe it should sound like a flushing toilet. <laughs> it just yeah. sounds like a clown Black horn. Holes literally <laughs> sounds like a flushing toilet. That would be hilarious. Yeah, uh, this is uh, another email having a pop at Lewis, so uh, I marked it to be read. Yeah, <laughs> why not? It's funny. No, go for it. I uh, just wanted to reach out in support of Lewis's mini rant on Carl Walker. I'm sure that the short time they spent together was enough for Lewis to understand his entire personality yeah. and get an accurate read on his complete lack of intelligence. And I'm doubly sure that his rudeness slash aloofness was not a result of Lewis making some cringy joke about dwarves or Walker's mum. Because when in the past has Lewis put his foot in his mouth around an athlete? <laughs> Jesus, true. Carl Walker was definitely the weirdo in that interaction. Thank you, Matthew. Maybe that wasn't meant to be read um, sarcastically, in which case I, I apologize, Matthew. Uh, I could read it non-sarcastically. Well, I'm sure that the time they spent together was enough for Lewis to understand his entire personality and get an accurate read on his complete lack of intelligence. And I'm doubly sure that his rudeness and aloofness really was sarcastic. not a result. It does. Yeah, I can't help myself. It's, it, well... Uh, Look, um, I've learned over the years to make snap judgments of people yes. when I've met them. <laughs> and I feel like I'm a very good snap judge of character. If you were there, my friend, um, you would have agreed with me, I promise. Yeah, there you promise. go. Because my snap judgment of your character is that you're a very intelligent man <laughs> and you would be able to judge other people's characters very well. Jeez. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. Take that <laughs> yeah. one all the way to the bank. Yeah, take it all the way to the bank. <laughs> This is yeah. uh, this is from, uh. from James. Just listened to, recently to, to episode 259 where you talk about conspiracy theories. Uh, my dad is vulnerable to, and, uh, to being easily led due to autism. He left our family a few years ago and met a woman who was an ardent anti-vaxxer. Uh, she effectively brainwashed him into believing it all, and since then it's gone from vaccines to chemtrails to the really crazy things like lizard people and uh, all the rest of it, and including that the earth is flat. Uh, I hardly recognize him anymore. He's a completely different person. And I cannot have a conversation with, any, with him without him chatting about this nonsense. As expert dads, how should I approach dealing with this? This is a tough it's one. It's a right? tough one, but I think, um, I think you just have to, as hard as it is for me, um, my advice would just be, just limit your exposure. Um, and then, you know, when you are around, uh, somebody who you do disagree with a lot of what they think and say, uh, at least if you're not around them all the time, you can, you can sort of just go along with it a little bit, you know, you, you can just sort of say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you know what I mean? But I, I think if mm. you're around somebody all the time and that is like the topic of conversation it's just gonna get worse and worse right there's gonna be friction and stuff because it's so hard to change people's this is a problem which humanity has had since the dawn of time yeah you know like, like and we, we we have so many problems with even now with people getting brainwashed into cults or religions people believing things without any kind of reason just because they were told to People wanting to believe there's something moral that other people are hiding stuff from them, and that they they're, they're the real truth knowledgers or whatever. Do you know what I mean like like it's it's a problem that we have even in like the elections in the biggest country in the world yeah. that people just believe falsehoods, and the government can't deal with it, the school system can't deal with it. And in fact, in many ways, the school system uses it. You know, look at how patriotic the education systems are in countries. You know, in the UK, even we don't learn about. All the awful things some the UK did, yeah. Um, but we're quite keen to talk about all the other things other countries did that were way worse, right? It, and it's kind of baked into you, right? Like, um, so you're full of biases and things that are false and beliefs that are, are at least at least bent, if not completely wrong. And and try to identify them or at least dial them back in other people. Yeah, is as hard as getting them to quit smoking or or drinking. Like you might want them to 
to lose weight, but you telling them to do it is not going to do it. And in fact, no. I think it's the opposite. I think that if you try and convince someone out of a conspiracy theory, you're going to just dig them in deeper. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they ha- the only way to get anyone to do anything is to make them think it was their own idea. Mm. Right. That's the only way. Like, if you want to get someone to quit smoking, you have to trick them into thinking it was their idea to quit smoking. Yeah. You know, if I want to get someone, otherwise, I'm not going to be their friend. I've learned this over a long time. Like, I can either be a friend of people or I can, you know, tell them what I really think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is, in my experience, it is, like Lewis said, it is impossible to change people. And the older people get, the more locked into however they are is. I'm not saying it never happens, but it, just in my experience, it's really tough. The, the, yeah, and and what, you have to, what you have to boil it down to is that, for you as as a person and for your mental well-being and mental health and stuff you need to realize that most uh, interactions you have should be on your own terms and should end positively you should be coming away from a social interaction with a loved one feeling angry drained upset you know what i mean like you really just need to get to the point where you're not around that person as much as hard as it is it's it's really it's hard impossible because to change the, them the, like i sometimes read like the am i the assholes or whatever or relationship sure, advice yeah. or whatever, it pops up on the front page and i'm bored and doom scrolling my phone or whatever right but that's a different problem but but a lot of the time on there there is people having these things where they're like my, you know my partner has um like gained weight or my partner and i don't know how to tell them or, or, but from the other side as well it's like my partner has suddenly started calling me fat or saying i don't know being mean like being mean to me and saying yeah. i should go to the gym like not even like calling him not not even like bad necessarily but saying like saying like oh you know i me and my husband are having problems he started doing these things and you know and everyone in the comments is like break up with him he's toxic yes he's telling you these things right yeah. it's like it's like their first that that's all the comments are and i i kind of agree in some sense but also i, I in that you know your loved one should you know be loving you for who you are and not caring about any of this stuff but at the same time your loved ones are sometimes the only people who are willing to tell you the things that they think are going wrong with you yeah. right like and and they it's hard isn't it it's, it's always your family who ends up becoming the enemy for telling you stuff that oh, and oftentimes they do it they tell you the wrong stuff too like they don't get me wrong like they'll tell you to have kids or you know, they'll tell you that the things that you don't, that are wrong, or they'll tell you to believe in conspiracy theories. Like, <laughs> it goes the other way as well. Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, it's so tricky to to know how to even approach people that you love about this, because you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, you, you don't want to damage that relationship. It's, it's it almost feels so fragile these days, um, especially if you're not married with, you know, if you're not as settled and as, as, as locked down. Yeah. It almost feels like the internet's advice is to, like, have, a zero tolerance on people being toxic to you. Um, Which, I, as a result, where's who's where's the motive? The motivation has to come from inside. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like there's a guy with bad breath in the office, right? How the fuck do I tell that guy that he's got bad? breath? You don't have to right? tell him. Gag every time. Just he accept speaks. that he has that he has <laughs> bad breath, and just do your best to stay away from him if it bothers you that much. It it's it, so it, everybody hard feels to, like to it's know. their responsibility to fix everything, and it's not. It's. It, some things are just the way they are and it sucks to hear that sometimes your loved ones just don't measure up to what they need to be you know what i mean bothers, like a, you I can spend it, your whole life trying to convince somebody otherwise or or whatever and in the end it's just not worth it because the, the only person that ends up uh falling is is you because you if you're if you're already like somewhat of a stable person and you believe in things that you that you believe in and 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 it's whatever you you shouldn't need to be dragged down i don't think you know what i mean like it it's it's not i don't think it's anybody's responsibility to to fix somebody else or sort somebody else out or or whatever like it's just it's a, it's a waste of time and it just it impacts so negatively on you in the long in the long term as well. You know what I mean? Like I think the answer actually, well, the, an answer is to work together with that person. Yeah. Right. Like if 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 you work together with them, but some you, some some people actually need professional help though. They need therapy. They need yeah, they need all sorts of stuff. Do. You know, like it, you can't 
you can't shoulder it all. It's too much. You like you've you've got your own own life to live. You you, you can't be minding somebody as well. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 pretty straightforward stuff. If you, if you can though, I think you can work together. You, you can, can. Give up smoking together. You can walk together. You can go to the gym together. You can you can make an effort to involve you them. You can, but if if you try a, a couple way. of times and it doesn't work, then you 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 can't just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and and winding up in the same dead end over and over and over. I know? guess it depends how important it is to you. And I think when it comes to conspiracy theory nuts and people believing in that kind of stuff, it doesn't feel as important. If someone's literally been told that, you know, they're going to die of a heart attack unless they stop eating meat yeah. or, you know yeah. what I mean, these things, then suddenly that, that's a wake-up call for them, yes. but also for you, for loved ones of them sure. to help them. And I think that you get you see these, like, interventions and stuff, and I feel like, oh, my God, I, I, if someone did an intervention on me, I'd... I'd resent them forever. Yeah. You know, I'm terrified of doing a, an a intervention on someone because I think that would be like, well, how do I make enemies for life? I just don't think it's the answer. I think it, if you if you if you want to help and the person that you want to help wants to be helped, then there's there's avenues for that. I don't think an intervention is really going to work, right? I don't know. I don't know. I, I've never done one. I don't know anyone. I don't. I've never done one either. But I would never do one either. I, I mean, it's. Well, I mean, if it's if someone's gonna kill themselves and their friends into and loved ones intervene and yeah. say look, you've got to stop i i can see the positives to that sure um i don't know i mean if you look here's here's a, a topic if you've been involved in an intervention in some way i don't want i don't want this uh mailbag to get too heavy no but uh we, we could read a couple of stories and maybe think about it like we're generalizing a lot here as well obviously there's going to be very specific situations where absolutely you should intervene or whatever but i think when when dealing with somebody who's believing in conspiracy theories and and is with somebody who's enabling them and and stuff like that i just don't know if it's yeah no that in those circumstances i just I don't, don't know if you if, do. if you if you get involved to that extent because yeah yeah here's some advice i've got my my uh when when it comes to um my my dad and and, and i have very very different political views like wildly different uh, to the point where I actually find his views like offensive, um, and this could be a real problem actually at like the dinner table or right. like at well, family he lives events. in Florida, so we know. You know, politics. <laughs> politics is one of those things that really kind of can like drive a wedge in a family, and, and, and it's has done as well. You oh yeah, you hear about it a lot more and more now, right? And it feels like this stuff doesn't really matter. Sometimes it does not really. Um, Ultimately, it doesn't, and it shouldn't really. But the but you gotta you gotta consider as well if that if if that is enough to cause a big rift in, in your family it was gonna be that or something else right like it's if it, if if the if the piece is yeah, so maybe. fragile in the first place you know what I mean right, so here's what I do uh, I just have a rule that we don't talk about politics yeah fair enough and if he if he starts bringing it up I'll just move on to something else yeah uh, because there's just no point no like there is literally no point like you said you're not going to change their mind uh it's it's just you know if it was if our relationship was a discord um like we would have a general chat channel i'd hang out in that channel yeah uh, the the politics channel i would never go in and that's true on my discord i have a politics channel i just don't go in there no i, I keep all everyone wants to have those conversations go fucking have them i don't want any part of it because i'm going to read yeah. something that's going to annoy me and it's going to change my opinion of someone where i think how the fuck can they think like that yeah that's a that's really awful uh, so I just avoid it. Yeah. And I think the problem with politics is it's actually way more fucking complicated than it seems on the surface. And it's, it's so nuanced and fiddly and you're trying to predict the future. And, and, and honestly, you're powerless to change anything too, right? You're, you're working with a lack of, a complete lack of incomplete information. Sorry. <laughs> I know what you you're mean. Working, do you know what I mean? And it's like, me, me and Ben talked about this a lot. And I think we, we're kind of constantly... As as humans on the earth, we're constantly made responsible for everything as if it's our fault. Yes, you know, we have the vote, so we vote for this, so it's our fault. Or we we're we're not recycling enough, or we're buying yogurt in plastic, so we're destroying the planet, or we're leaving the heating on, you know, or we're using aircon, so we're you know, it's almost like it's our everything's been put at our feet. And if you let that get to you, you end up being like so fucking miserable all the time. Yeah. It's like you know, it's so you're so powerless, and yet we're made to feel like it's our like we are powerful and we can take control of our own destiny and we can change things, but we can't. And you're constantly told all these awful, awful things that happen. You can, and there's obviously no. nothing you can do about them. Nine a lot of the time. Yeah, sure, you could go out and protest in, in Bristol and 
hold some placards up and, yeah. you know, march along with everyone else. If but, that's what you want you know, to do, yeah, exactly. You, you and can. if that makes you feel better, great, you know, but I think ignorance is bliss, honestly, when it comes to this. And it, I'd say it really in all is. things, ignorance is bliss, which is why I'm so happy. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 as I've gotten older, I've definitely gotten to a point where I'm like, I just don't, I just don't want, it's just better if I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested to, to read about stuff and like, you know, I, I, I like to, to learn and, 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 and see what makes people tick and stuff like that, but I don't yeah. want to get involved. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have to convince somebody of a, of a point that I'm making. I don't want to have to convince somebody that, that the, that the earth is, flat or not you know you know what i mean like it's just i don't feel it's not my place to do it even when i do my research and i feel like i know everything about something i still feel like i'm not smart enough to make a decision yeah. right I, I think and as a result like i just feel like there's this that has led to me caring less about yeah. it which means i learn less about it which means i care less about it which means my knowledge is kind of yes like you said i sips i'm interested in i'll watch a a documentary or news or anything like, yeah. like anyone else, right? And be interested yeah. in it. But but I also know deep in my heart that I don't want to be in a big debate with way somebody. more smart yeah. people. Because because my my default stance is 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 not is so non committal anyway. I'm not you know I'm not I don't I don't agree with like racists and Nazis and fascists and stuff like that. Obviously, but um, at the same time, like I don't want to have a big debate with them. I don't want to have a big debate with people on the other side either you know what i mean like uh, it's i think i'm old enough to realize that most people are, are just not going to really change their minds about certain things you know like i think if you've gone to the effort to start believing in the things that you believe in in the first place i, I i'm never going to in a million years be able to convince you otherwise like uh yeah. I, I, you know what i mean I, there's not going to be this big like uh you know, oh, uh, ep epiphany moment where they, moments yeah. where it's like, holy shit, yeah, that's all I needed was for him to say this one thing. And now I've completely changed my mind. Like, uh, I've never seen that happen before in my whole life. And like, look I look at news TV at the moment, they always have two opposing views on, and all it's doing is playing to the respective galleries. Yeah. There's no one changing their mind. Anyone who's undecided isn't going to watch it and doesn't care. Yeah. Like, it's, you're literally just a preaching to the two choirs yeah and you just get the two sides to do that it's just to get eyeballs on these things so when you have an argument with a friend or a loved one about politics it's never going to end well no there's no point where you're both going to go do you know what that was a really good chat thanks and i've got lots to think about and so have you i'm now yeah because our opinions. Uh, no. most 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 of these um conversations just end up being dictated by ego anyway right because you're you've got an opinion that you're insecure about and your friend has an in, an opinion that they're pretty insecure about so everybody's pride and everything gets in the way and it's it's never going to end like you said with like oh thanks barry you thanks for enlightening me <laughs> It's yeah. always going to be fuck you. You have it in for me. You've always been trying to destroy me. Um, now I really <laughs> think that the Earth is flat as fucking hell, and I want to punch you in the face as well. And that's basically uh, yeah, how yeah. every conversation or I argument mean, or debate goes. History, right? though, like, even since ancient Greece, we've had these great orators telling their, you know, convincing, doing debating, and standing up in the in the Senate and talking about what they believe in and trying to convince people and trying to change people's minds with, you know, convincing arguments. And we've always struggled because there's so many traps and fallacies and lies and no one has enough knowledge to be an expert on everything or even know about everything. Like, you know, even as, a, as someone with a master's in chemistry, you know, my knowledge of chemistry is in such a tiny part of that pie chart, right? Like I, I'm not an, an, an expert at all and a politician has to be an expert on everything from war to healthcare to educating kids to roads do you know what I mean and, and we shift them around certainly in the uk it's like just a random guy is suddenly oh one time he's secretary of the environment yeah, yeah. and the next year he's in charge of the police and it's like you know it's it's these people have to have to try and be polymaths and uh, but but mostly that they're just bum bungling along, yeah. um, making decisions which the, the the newspapers, you know, what which one of these is going to play best in the, you know, it's, it's a juggling game of frustrating nonsense. I, yeah, I guess most like, of them try to be polymaths, but they end up being poly worlds. 
the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got. Let, let's move on. This is this is this will be the last sorry, we, one. We are fa- I am fascinated in that subject. So sorry, I. Dragged right. it out. I am too, but I don't know. I I don't want to come across as like a like cranky, old, and uncaring and stuff. But I I just feel I I I really do feel that it, it that you have to pick your your battles. Like uh, some things are worth pursuing, I and other things agree. are just absolutely not they will just waste yeah. all of your time and make you miserable so apologies if that means your relationship with your dad uh falters a little bit but um i think from for the sounds of it your mental health is suffering from having to worry about this stuff and i think uh like sip said you're not going to change his mind yeah um and i think my advice of just avoiding those topics as best you can yes and when they when they bring it up just find things to, to do else. that are fun where you don't get engaged yeah. in that stuff go bowling exactly. or whatever and then if the topic comes up just say okay time to go home you know like it you just right. you just have to like everything you gotta, you in life you got to play people to their strengths right and yeah. and and do the stuff that you know is safe and fun and that everybody can just get some some good time out there's of there's enough there's enough conversation talk about portage yeah. talk about the bear story <laughs> yeah. you know like yeah. there's enough like there's enough shit to talk about right uh okay this is from jacob this will be the last one i guess because it's uh this we're over an hour now uh so was just listening to episode 259 and you guys were talking about the battle of yeah and the fact that google auto filled a weird response it got me thinking of the fact that in recent weeks a lot of my search results have had york tagged in them right uh, at the end for no real reason at first, I thought this was really weird and random, but then I started playing the new Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and I realized that I presume from the results of the other searches that York was in fact Totk, and people's keyboards had been auto-correcting the searches. So T-O-T-K, Tears of the Kingdom, oh, uh, is what people are I looking see, for, yeah. but people's keyboards are auto-correcting it to York. Yeah. I thought this was funny and thought you might get a chuckle out of it because it means Google's own autocorrect is messing up their search engine results. This is this is something you see quite a lot when you mistype something. Yeah, Google knows what you mean because other people make the same typo million times a day, searching for the same thing. So I thought yeah. that was quite interesting. I, I do wonder how many search results, how many pages have been accidentally bumped up by the search um, was the, algorithm the, through typos. What was the recent one where they changed they changed autocorrect on I think it was Apple phones to not uh, autocorrect to ducking hell. I, I can't tell you how many times that has annoyed me. You're you're trying to write fucking hell and and it autocorrects to ducking, ducking. hell and it's so yeah. annoying. Like cuz normally if you're using if you're throwing a fucking hell in there, it's cuz you're kind of annoyed or you know, you're you're passionate on the subject or whatever. And to have your time wasted by ducking hell is just too much. It's a yeah, life's too short. Yeah. To I think actually it's hell. a decent percent. I I think I'd say not not more than about half or one percent, but I think it's still an amount. And the reason I'm saying that is because back in the day, in the back end of YouTube, we used to get like a good, a very good analytical feed of what people would type in to get to our mm. videos, right? So it would give you like suggested tags, and like Yogscast would be a tag, but then, and that would have been like Yogscast would be like a tag of like you know 250, but then there would be like Yog Cat, and that would be five, right? And then Yogs. Yogcast would be another five. Yeah. I mean, so there would be like these tags would almost be in the most searched for things that got to (laughs) your channel, right? So I I think there are there is a significant typo population that happens. I don't really even type bother typing. I I, when I type into Google, I I I expect it to autocorrect, and I think a lot of people do as well. They just splodge it in. I don't care Um, because you almost know that it's gonna auto fix, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I wonder if that that if if Google being good at it has just led to it being worse. Um, you know, more people making typos. <laughs> I wonder, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's our that's our mailbag. What a mailbag! I hope it's you guys enjoyed bag. it. That was a really good one. Some fantastic it was all emails. Over the place. Yeah, good emails. It went. It Lots went, of variety. It went deep. It went up in the sky. It went all all around. It was uh, it was nice. A good yeah. good variety, like you said. Uh, I I have uh, I have one request, um, which would be quite often we get emails following up on things we talked about on the previous mailbag, which is great. Sometimes it gives us some clarity on things and adds details. Love Love that. But um, let's have some topics that we haven't talked about before. So if you've got something that we haven't mentioned, interesting stories or something fun or interesting that you've done or that you've heard about that we haven't talked about, go ahead and send it in. And uh, I'll see if if I filter through every email that you send to the mailbag. The ones I don't respond to, 
Uh, don't assume I don't like them. It's just that sometimes we've already had like five or six along the same lines this week. Or as I keep saying, sometimes the emails are too long. So I appreciate a TLDR, which some people do, but sometimes it's like four screens worth of text. I'm sorry. I love the fact you typed this email out. I hope you understand it. It's not going to get read out on the podcast. But thank you so much for sending them in. Maybe we could do like a special podcast where we just read out one really long one. Oh my God. We could do that. But honestly, some of them, I mean, and the thing is, some of them, they're not written like an essay. It's just a very rambling stream like of novel. consciousness. <laughs> so right. Four pages. I can imagine someone's up very late at night and they just thought, oh, I'm a fucking email a Trifles podcast. They just start <laughs> typing and they never stop. That's, right. that's what it looks like. But yeah, we've had some crackers lately. So thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a good time, uh, P Flex. Yes. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. I'll be back next All right. week. Yeah. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.